Joe Rogan has recently received a lot of criticism for suggesting that young healthy people should not take the COVID-19 vaccine. It turns out that he ended up having COVID-19 and on his Instagram he released a statement. I got fevers and sweats and I knew what was going on. So I got up in the morning, got tested and it turns out I got COVID. Ben Askren reacted to the negative press and posted this on his Instagram with the tweet If you find yourself wishing Joe Rogan would have gotten sicker or worse, you need to take a deep look at your values and what's in your heart. Dana White commented on the post saying, 100%, the piece of media is so happy and excited he caught COVID. A fan replied to Dana White saying, at Dana White, why don't you shut the F up supporting someone that wanted to overthrow democracy? Also, pay your fighters too. Dana White responded back saying, calm down you creepy looking he followed up with very very good idea to keep your account private. The UFC's recently signed world-class kickboxer Alex Pereira to his roster and is scheduled to make his debut against Andreas Michalis at UFC 268. He's most famously known for knocking out Israel Adesanya in 2017 at Glory of Heroes 7. Since that time both fighters have come a very long way, where Israel Adesanya is the current UFC middleweight champion. Alex Pereira currently holds a mixed martial arts record of 3-1 and, and last defeated Thomas Powell by KO at LFA 95. He reacted to signing with the UFC and posted this on his Instagram with the caption, Tomorrow I'm going to do my last kickboxing fight in the biggest organization at Glory Kickboxing. I want to thank everyone's support who has always supported me in kickboxing and I hope you support me realize one more dream which is to fight MMA in the biggest organization that is the UFC. But focus is 100% tomorrow. Thank you for everything Glory. Aljamain Sterling on the MMA Hour revealed that he hasn't fully recovered from his surgery and is still having lingering issues with his body. There's some lingering issues and this is just me being honest and transparent which I'm always am with the fans and and uh, you can say whatever you want to say. He's backing out or making excuses. Dude, I had a very serious neck injury and yeah. I lost a good amount of muscle. And I'm trying to rebuild, re what would you call it? Repair, rebuild the nerve damage that happened in my arm. And uh, it's better. But to say it's it's where it was before a couple of fights ago, that's would be just straight up lying, you know? Piotion reacted and tweeted, this will pull out from the fight. Aljamain Sterling responded back saying this clan pulled out of a fight in November because he didn't train enough. You're my now hold my pocket. He ended it off with this man keeps talking about pulling out of a fight when he was the one that pulled out of the fight. Please make it make sense. You sound like you want to pull out so bad for some weird reason. Hashtag pull out Pete. A three round world weight bout between Michael Chiesa vs Sean Brady has been targeted for a UFC card on November 20th. Michael Chiesa is coming off a submission loss to Vicente Luque and Sean Brady is coming off a submission win over Jake Matthews. Michael Bisping on the Believe Me podcast gives his thoughts on Dana White hinting that he may release Kevin Lee. You know, for Kevin Lee, he's come up to 170, came up short against Daniel Rodriguez. There's no shame in that. that I'm, I'm telling you, that was always going to be a tough fight. Daniel Rodriguez is a bad mother, right? And when we were talking, when he was talking, uh, when we were talking to Kevin Lee, and I don't know who Kevin Lee was talking to, but he said, um, for the fight, it means he's like, yeah, I've been speaking to some people on the streets. Some people in the prisons, they told me, Michael Ro Daniel Rodriguez is a bad mother. They told me to be careful with that guy, you know. So Kevin Lee's got some badass friends as well. But still, that was always going to be a tough fight. And of course, you know, his, his, his record isn't the best lately. He's on a two fight losing streak. Lost to Daniel Rodriguez. Before that, he lost to Charles Oliveira, who's now the lightweight champion of the world. Before that, knocked out Gregor Gillespie with a highlight reel knockout. Before that, lost to Rafael Dos Anjos. Again, Dos Anjos, he's the man. And then before that, Alaya Quinta, you know, and I, Alaya Quinta good as well. So I, I understand what Dan is saying because in his last five, he's won one, you know. Uh, so it's never a good look. Uh, and I think Mike Perry would be great. Mike Perry, uh, it's, it's, it'd be a favorable match. What's up, everybody? King Triple C here. You guys welcome to this episode of Breaking Down the Fight. I don't know if you guys can tell. Can I show you guys my Hall of Fame real quick? What you guys know about that? What you guys know about all that? What you guys know about all that gold, all that swagger? Anyway, let's get straight to it. We all saw the Jake Paul Tyron Woodley fight. Man, how do I break that fight down with two unexperienced people? Um, I will say, I will start off with this. Jake Paul did beat Tyron Woodley. I think I maybe only had Tyron maybe winning the first or second. I'm sorry, the second or third. I forget when he caught him with that good straight right. But that's about it. Two passive. Those power shots really, they, they don't mean anything. Like I said before, and I'm the one that called this fight. If you guys remember, a lot of you guys were mad at me. There's no way. There's no way. 
No, there is because there's a difference with the size of the glove. The size of the glove was a big difference. And I'm really surprised that Tyra Wu didn't catch on to the same combination that uh, that Logan Paul tends to have, which he goes, he goes jab to the head, down to the bottom, and then he sets it up. These are all smoke, jab to the, jab to the face, jab to the stomach, and then he completely, and then he throws that overhand there, which is actually a really good clean combination. And I like, I like it, but that's all he had. And then Tyler was just, he was just sitting on that right hand. Anyhow, for those of you who think Tyra won, man, you're crazy, man. You guys, the, the fact that Tyra Woodley allowed Jake Paul to 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 be in the fight with him, that's just, you, you just, you lost, man. But I will say this, at the end of the day, Tyra Woodley is a real winner. You imagine how much pay-per-view money that he made? You know, he's, and he's, he's got a good mouthpiece, man. The dude can sell a fight. He may not be able to know how to fight or know how to box, but he can sell that fight. Because think about it, guys. Think about the entertainment side of fighting. This is what I'm saying. A lot of you guys think, a lot of you guys who think mixed martial arts is, you know, respect, honor. No, 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 no. That's not going to get you paid. Start a damn gimmick. Start something. Start promoting. Do something if you want to make money. Why do you think I started the king of cringe? I mean, these guys are selling tickets. I mean, the real winner, though, at the end of the day, even though he lost, it is Tyron Woodley. Because if he does get that second rematch, which I would get a tattoo on my on my uh, on my thigh for you know another six seven million, why not? I mean that's the real winner. But if I was Jake Paul, I wouldn't give him another shot. The only reason why is because you guys shook hands with me. You guys said when I beat you, you're gonna get a tattoo on your wherever it is, and they shook hands on it. You don't gotta shake hands again. You don't have you don't need that approval. You already beat him. Move on to the next. Whether it's uh, whether you fight Fury. Which I think Fury would actually beat him. Now I'm gonna change. Now I'm gonna swap because Fury. Fury the, the, the thing with Fury is his length, and I don't think he understands his ability just yet. But what's he starts to understand his range? Because if you notice in that fight with that MMA fighter, he was smothering all his punches. But as soon as he recognizes his actual range on how to connect and how to hit somebody, dude, the, 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 the dude is a gift. The dude has the natural ability. Anyhow, that's my breakdown. Jake Paul, yeah, I think you have Nate Diaz to go after. I think you have Conor McGregor to go after. I think I think you continue to keep making that money, but I want to go back to Tyron Willie. He made his money. You guys shook on it. He was supposed to get that tattoo uh, when you're supposed to beat him, and don't do it now, man. If you guys give each other a word, you guys already did it on national television. Take it back. Retire. Do what you want. The only reason why I'm starting to become a Jake Paul fan now, too, is because he's out there and he's putting pressure on everybody. And you guys know what I'm talking about. Anyhow, that's the breakdown. Triple C is out.